afternoon and thank you, Professor Rao, for accepting my invitation to my series entitled Asking the Hard Questions, What Legacy Are We Leaving Our Young? And you are in Delhi in India. Uh, you're a best-selling author, public speaker, business consultant, executive coach, and you're ranked number one thought leader and influencer globally in culture at Thinkers360. So I am privileged that you have taken time to speak with me on this series, which I am putting up on my YouTube channel. Now, I ask you, would you like to introduce yourself and particularly tell me about the wonderful books that you have written? First of all, uh, thank you, uh, Teresa, for having me on your show. And greetings to all your uh, listeners. I'm speaking from India. And uh, uh, my name is Professor Ramesh Rao, and I have written uh, 60 books. Out of 60, I have published 50 books. Uh, uh, I write books on uh, uh, various areas like leadership, learning, uh, teaching, education, uh, CEOs, mindfulness, gender. So I am an experimental author. So I would like to show you a couple of books right now. Uh, this is the book. Yes. Uh, titled Vision 2030, 1 million global leaders. Excellent. Yeah. And for, this, uh, yeah uh, 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 for this book, Dr. Kiran Bedi, a Marxist Award winner, has written a foreword for this book. And I have dedicated this book to former president of India, Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Very this book is about uh, my vision 2030, 1 million global leaders. I want to uh, build 1 million students as global leaders by 2030. So far, I have trained more than 40,000 students as global leaders. It's a non-profit one, and I'm passionate about students. I want to build a next generation of leaders. So I have written this book. This is one of my best-selling books. Excellent. This is the book on uh, mindfulness. See the light in you. Excellent. Uh, for, for which His Holiness Dalai Lama has written a foreword. Brilliant. The, the Nobel Laureate, uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama has written a foreword for this book. The Excellent. title of the book is See the Light in You. Uh, this is on mindfulness and spirituality. As I told you that I am an experimental author, I keep writing books on various genres. So Excellent. this is a book on mindfulness. And I have dedicated this book to our uh, Vice President of India, Mr. M. Vaitya Naidu. Excellent. Very interesting. Yeah, this is one more book on women leadership. Uh, I advocate gender equality globally. I have signed up for has hashtag he for she. Uh, this is the book uh, I have authored uh, and uh, it has got great response globally. Uh, and uh, for this book, the Vice President of India, Mr. M. Venkai Naidu, has written a foreword. Excellent. And I, I think, did, and, I think and, uh, we, could, uh, we could do with that book here in Ireland. Oh, I okay, must get you. some copies. Go on, oh, yeah? Thank you. And uh, this book I have dedicated to three women leaders, Rosa Parks, Maya Angelou, and Oprah Winfrey. I admit these three women leaders, so I have dedicated this book to these three women leaders. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Very impressive. But the, your your, your uh, topics are so relevant to today's fast-paced, quick-changing world. And that's what has caused me to ask the hard questions, because I believe a lot of people fear asking the hard questions and asking the right questions. And if we do not ask questions, we do not influence the direction our world is going in. So with that, I'm going to start with my first question. Do education systems worldwide fail to address our responsibility to give our children a holistic education to prepare them for life, not just for work? Uh, see, the question is quite interesting. We can't say that we have totally failed, but I partly agree with you that uh, we have failed partly uh, to build uh, uh, students with the global mindset. Uh, 
Yes. So what we need to focus is uh, an education system which can uh, build global citizens uh, with a unique mindset, tool set, and uh, skill set. So that is what is uh, required in the current context, especially in the wake of uh, 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 artificial intelligence and fourth, indus uh, fourth industrial revolution, and especially after the uh, uh, COVID, COVID pandemic, things have changed. Previously, there was more emphasis on uh, 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 classroom education. Now there is a dramatic shift to uh, this uh, online education. So we need to reinvent with the changing times and technologies. So similarly, uh, we need to have an education system uh, uh, that uh, encourages curiosity in uh, students, uh, that, uh, uh, that encourages uh, uh, students to think globally uh, so that they can grow as global citizens and uh, they can build a better world. And uh, the responsibility lies with us uh, to make sure that we are uh, uh, building the next generation of leaders. And in essence, to your mind, what does it mean to be a global citizen? <clears throat> global citizens means, uh, see, we have to think locally. That's one thing. Uh, at the core level, we have to think uh, uh, locally. But at the surface level, we have to think globally. That means the world is a small village currently. So we need to have local interests and also we should uh, as, per, uh, uh, as per international standards. So we, there should be a judicious mix of both uh, local education and uh, global education. So when we have that kind of education, so we'll be able to build global citizens. I would like to put it in this way. Uh, at the infrastructure, we need to have local education. At the superstructure, we need to have global education. So when we can uh, create that kind of education, I hope we'll be able to build uh, students with a global mindset. And we need to teach students uh, to look at the similarities, not the differences. Sure. And, and the outcome, obviously, the hoped for outcome is world harmony and acceptance of each other as human beings. Yes? Yes. Now, oh. how has our perception of our purpose on Earth been diluted over the past decades? How can we ground our young in a sense of hope and optimism towards fulfilling their divine purpose? Okay, now you rightly said that, that uh, no, we treat uh, one world as one family. So I would like to uh, say from the Indian perspective. So Indians uh, uh, have a philosophy uh, of Vasudeva Kutubakam. That means we Indians think that entire world is one family. That means we are all the citizens of the world. Uh, irrespective of nationalities, irrespective of religions, irrespective of national boundaries, irrespective of languages, irrespective of communities. That's what Indians, we believe in. We call it as Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That means the entire world is one family. So thank you for uh, talking from that perspective. And when we have that kind of mindset that the entire world is one family, we'll be able to build global citizens. Now coming to the question of uh, optimism, it is our responsibility uh, to uh, instill uh, positivity and optimism in students. So what we need to do is we need to inculcate the right attitude in students. Uh, for instance, I worked as a professor in various educational institutions. Apart from teaching my subject knowledge, I earned my PhD in soft skills. I conducted the soft skills training programs uh, and uh, I conducted leadership development programs. I taught for MBA students. I taught for uh, engineering students. Apart from sharing my regular academic knowledge, I try to emphasize more on uh, changing the mindsets of the students because changing the mindsets of the students is more important than sharing knowledge. Because currently, the knowledge can be acquired by students through online, through various sources, books. So what students uh, need is the kind of uh, passionate academic leaders, passionate academic visionaries who can uh, 
improve the mindsets of the students and who can transform students in a right way so that's what i have emphasized apart from uh, improving the personality attitude and behavior of the students we need to instill hope we need to instill a confidence in students which is very much required sure so if we lay down the solid proper foundations and look to the whole person we have a greater possibility of instilling that hope that positivity and that a uh, global love and acceptance of one another now mm. our young are crying out for leadership oh. how and why are we failing to deliver on that leadership at this point in time yeah uh, it's a great question and a very thought provoking one i realized that uh, uh, students crave for leadership uh, that's the reason what i have been doing you know for the last uh, 10 years uh, i deliberately uh, took uh, phd in soft skills why emphasize it soft skills because these are the skills required and i am passionate about education i am passionate about learning i am passionate about teaching i am passionate about students so this is what so i know the pulse of the students right then what happened uh, i started uh, feeling that students uh, uh, were craving for leadership the students were craving for a passionate uh, teachers then i started sharing my knowledge freely with the world by way of my blog vision 2030 1 million global leaders then later on that blog Uh, i have cannot into a book which i have shown you some time back that's vision 2030 so these things i realized uh, uh, 14 years ago that there was a gap gap means uh, the students were craving for leaders students were craving for the teachers who are passionate right so this gap was existing because of this reason i started uh, dedicating more to uh, more towards my students and i sacrificed my life i am from a lower middle class family with lots of financial challenges but still i share my knowledge freely with the world why because i love students i want to build 1 million global leaders by 2030 so the point of leadership is very much relevant it's a gap which is still existing it is the responsibility of uh, faculty members or teachers or educators whatever you call they must raise to the occasion to fill that gap Sure. that gap is existing i agree with you 100% and, and it's our responsibility to fill the gap i've read recently a report uh, on global leadership 2021 and they cited a, a deficit in on that leadership bench for the future they are finding mm. it increasingly difficult to get people to who have the skills and the interests and the diligence to take over leadership roles in 2011 they reckoned they, there was a 20% supply but mm. by 2020 that mm. supply has reduced to 11% so mm. we're coming into a crisis across mm. america in particular this this report was in relation to the united states we're coming into a crisis point where they will find it difficult to find leaders so your interest at this point is very very relevant the greater and more elevated the position we hold in society the greater our accountability and our responsibility towards those people we lead why do so many leaders fail in these responsibilities okay very good question but before asking this question you have highlighted uh, some research points uh, i would like to share the same uh, research points uh, which i have done research some 10 years back see globally there is a leadership crisis which we call it as leadership deficit yes leadership deficit why it has come i'll tell you i will tell you through research findings because i'm passionate uh, researcher i'm passionate about students see the baby boomers are retiring globally baby boomers old people are retiring globally yes yes yeah and millennials who are known as generation uh, y and the centennials who are known as generation z they don't have leadership qualities 
so i belong to generation x so since i belong to generation x i can become a bridge between baby boomers and generation y See, the generation y. y is also known as millennials sure. so I, i'm i'm fortunate to, to have been born uh, at Between. a particular point of era uh-huh. in the world history so uh, it's then i thought i can serve as a bridge between baby boomers and uh, uh, generation y and of course generation z is also entering who are also known as centennials right so then i did research that i can serve as a bridge uh, by grooming uh, one million students as global leaders that's how the journey of this vision 20 has uh, vision 2030 has started Very which you have told with a different uh, research finding but this is the actual uh, research finding based on generational gaps right, right. thank you for asking a very wonderful question and it appears that you are very passionate about uh, what you do it shows clearly that you are very passionate about uh, education learning and students leaders have failed why because why leaders have failed i will tell you when you look at uh, short term by ignoring the long term then you, you end up in a mess so what you need to do is you have to align your short term goals with long term goals we have short term goals and long term goals so what the leaders are doing currently is to ensure their survival they are focusing on short term goals they are going by short term temptations ignoring long term goals so what they should do is they should align both short term goals with long term goals and they should go in a with a proper vision and mission vision sure. means where they want to go mission means how they want to go so sure. when they have a right road map blueprint uh, with an emphasis on long term they will be able to uh, succeed as leaders right and additionally uh, people uh, are looking for survival not okay somehow they want to survive today they are not thinking about tomorrow uh, but when you want to impact inspire the world in the long term you have to think long term yes you should, you should think about tomorrow you should think about the next generation of students how i will be able to build a better world if you look at mother teresa she lived for tomorrow when you look at mahatma gandhi he lived for tomorrow when you look at martin luther king Uh, junior he lived for uh, uh, tomorrow when you look at nelson mandela he lived for tomorrow so why these people are still remembered they uh, they lived for long term goals but they suffered they never bothered for their survival they, they were, were they were selfless they were selfless in their pursuit of the goals and yeah. they thought of the other maybe Excellent. today uh, the uh, uh, present day leader is uh, selfish and <laughs> thinks, thinks in terms of short term yeah uh, uh, and they're not building for the future which is yeah. why i asked that question what uh, legacy are we leaving our young and unless we plant today we won't reap tomorrow you know yeah we will miss the bus if we don't yes. act now yeah. absolutely you rightly said Uh, when leaders put uh, profit before the people they end up in a fiasco so what they should care you know they should be people centric they should be other centric you said selfish people selfish leaders okay selfish leaders selfish people they cut corners right whereas other centric people they sacrifice their lives for the sake of others sure. so we need that kind of leaders we need uh, servant leaders we need soft leaders we need transformational leaders we need passionate educators we need passionate visionaries to build next generation of students and next generation of leaders sure absolutely okay. now the next question relates to uh, the home the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world we were always told yeah what hand do you believe is rocking the cradle in the modern day world and how can we bring this responsibility back into the home the responsibility for the formation of our young the generations of of tomorrow okay very good question see usually it is said uh, uh, it's the parents who start uh, building character in the students 
then the students come to education institution it's the teachers who build the character uh, and the shape then again when they leave the education institutions they get into society then the society plays a major role so what i would like to see is that we need an integrated approach we need a holistic approach where uh, parents teachers students intellectuals thought leaders they have to work together so that we can build uh, healthy students we can build healthy citizens okay so you we can't uh, say that only a mother or father or only the parents uh, have a role uh, to shape the students yes they, they they do have a role to play but their role is limited okay once they get into educational institutions it is the teachers who have to who have a crucial role to play in shaping the character of the students so what i would feel uh, is that uh, it's a uh, it's a confluence of various things like parents teachers thought leaders intellectuals sure. even students should also have that kind of mindset to be molded it's not a one way traffic it's a two way traffic it's a two way street yeah. you can't clap with one hand if teacher is passionate student is not passionate it's a problem so both should have passion you can clap with two hands not with one hand so we need to create a chemistry between teachers and students Very right good. that's yes. what is required and again in the educational institutions uh, teachers uh, teach uh, education uh, as per curriculum and they teach uh, as per uh, it's a teacher centric now what we have to do is we have to emphasize the education system which is student centric that means what students want we have to give not that what i know i will give it that doesn't work out right okay. teachers often what they do is whatever they know they teach now there must be a shift in 20th 21st century teachers must find out what students want and they have to give what students want then what happens students will have more interest and uh, there will be a good uh, chemistry between teachers and students and the learning takes place effectively now e in terms of technology and in terms of our dependence on technology now and even more so into the future how is that assisting students and how is it actually a hindering them there is an upside and a downside how do you see it how do you see it playing out how do you see us controlling the technology so that the students develop holistically as well very good question this is a very this is a very controversial and a complicated question but i would like to handle it very easily see technology uh, you can't throw the technology out first point because you and i are connected because of technology so technology is both good and bad it depends on how you use it mm -hmm. if you if a thief has a knife he can kill somebody rob if if the doctor has got the knife what he will do he will do surgery and save the patient mm -hmm. right so technology is a tool how we use it matters now you can't throw the technology out of it's like you know throwing the baby with bath water so you can't throw the technology out so i i don't believe in that so what we must do is uh, treat technology as an ally not a, an enemy and learn to harness technology now we are harnessing technology otherwise i don't know teresa uh, you don't know professor ms rao but we are connected thanks to technology so sure. we we can't throw the technology out so we should always take the good things one secondly change is the only thing constant in this world we have to change with the changing times and technologies right so okay. but but it has to be in a healthy manner it has to be in a systematic manner for instance uh, some of the young people they misuse technology they have smartphones uh, they do gaming pornography so many things they do it so those are the areas of concern so they should use it for uh, for a right cause for instance uh, during the global pandemic uh, coronavirus uh, 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 education institutions were closed the, then students learned uh, through smartphones they utilize smartphones 
so technology has uh, was useful and also during the global uh, pandemic uh, people uh, were isolated due to social distancing but they were connected through technology sure. if technology were not there then entire world would have come to a not the yeah. entire world would have been stopped thanks to technology that uh, work happened from work from home and things started moving people were informed about global pandemic and we came out of the crisis successfully so we we can't blame technology for all these things everything has got uh, 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 okay. pros and cons everything has got uh, strengths and weaknesses so we should try to take the strengths as far as possible uh, so that uh, we can ha- harness technology in a right way to put it precisely uh, technology is a double edged sword technology is a double edged sword we must know how to use technology wisely judiciously effectively and successfully excellent so we with the technology is the tool that we need to learn how to use with yeah. balance yeah, yeah. excellent so, you have put it very simple language i told uh, lengthy statements you put it in small sentences you hit the bulls eye thank you <laughs> thank you and uh, now why do you think have our young people become so anxious and prone to mental health problems that is something that has happened particularly in the west i don't know if that is your experience in india are both the east and west finding the same problem arising and if so why uh see it, uh, you don't say east or west it's a universal problem this mental illness anxiety not only affected students uh, it has affected parents everybody previously people were interacting physically with the people now people are interacting with smartphones students or anyone if two brothers are there in a home one brother Uh, scrolls the smartphone another brother scrolls the scrolls the smartphone they don't talk to each other this is the trend globally yes. so this uh, uh, this anxiety uh, depression even suicides are rising uh, let me add one more thing we didn't highlight in india stu- students uh, uh, are committing suicide why they are committing suicide because there is pressure from parents to perform well there is pressure from teachers to perform well and students don't know how to choose their subjects properly so there are various factors which are prevailing uh, in india so this is uh, the challenge which you said about anxiety depression uh, is uh, gun culture i can i can add the word gun culture of course gun culture we call it in the us uh, uh, and some other countries uh, but those things are there across the world it's not that it's there only in us it's not there in uh, eastern countries like india yeah that culture is there but in a different format it is there but it is it is there so let us not uh, conclude that uh, this problem exists only in east or west it's a universal problem we have to accept it and we have to uh, educate children in the right way ultimately everything boils down to education it's the parents responsibility it's the teachers responsibility is the responsibility of the society sure and uh, i think social media and a youngsters dependence on social media and the whole need to, uh, their desire for acceptance and it really is a false world the world of social media but it exerts pressure on the young and they either feel included or excluded and it puts pressure it exerts pressure on them to appear to be a certain way so yeah. somehow it robs them of their individuality in ways mm-hmm. and it, it it exerts pressure would you think uh, I, i agree with your point even i i talked about it in various articles and journals the problem with social media is that uh, people compare with others so the moment you compare with others what happens you will you get into depression right you, you should never ever compare with others you are a gift from the god Mm-hmm. god has gifted you god has given you life you are unique you are blessed to be unique so respect that the uniqueness which god has gifted you and you are born so don't compare with others but you can take someone as an inspiration right taking inspiration is different comparing with others is different sure. you should not compare with others 
because social media is full of uh, rosy pictures people think is great he she is great but you don't know what kind of challenges they are having right sure. they always present rosy picture on social media it's the same uh, the rosy yeah. picture what challenges they have what family problems they have what financial oh. challenges uh, they have nobody knows so but by awesome. looking at the social media profile we think that they are better than me it's not in that way right oh. so what i would like to say is that don't compare with others instead compete with yourself raise your bar every day you work hard raise your bar compete with yourself keep growing why do you want to compare with others but you can take someone as a inspiration role model and keep working hard enjoy the journey of life okay at the same time focus on destination but don't focus too much on your destination that you fail to enjoy your uh, uh, journey of your life right yeah 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 now <coughs> covid covid 19 and the changes governments are legislating for will pose many challenges for our young in the future what challenges do you envisage how can we best prepare our young for these challenges covid uh, has uh, changed uh, the way uh, the teaching is done the way students learn uh, so it has uh, covid has uh, thrown things out of gear Uh, but again we humans are very smart and brilliant so we are blessed with the power of imagination and we are back to the track because we are resilient okay now coming to the point of your uh, covid 19 uh, definitely covid 19 has changed the game and earlier we were focusing on classroom education now we, we are focusing on online education but whatever the case it is the teachers can, can never replace uh, technology can never replace teachers technology can never replace teachers one thing i am giving a message very clearly uh, but the technology is a tool you said sometime back very smartly very brilliantly you said uh, simple line up that is technology is a tool so technology is a tool that we need to leverage it effectively and we are going to have online education and i think the we will be able to have easy accessibility to education and i also believe strongly that the education becomes cheaper in the year, years to come because of online education these are all the strengths sure. so if education becomes cheaper and because of let's say the its ease of use and um, uh, our ease of access using technology do you believe that education will reach more people and that maybe we will have more equality in education it won't be just for a few it will be for a lot of people brilliant excellent excellent point you are very optimistic mm-hmm. in this area yeah uh, when education reaches to uh, more people when there is accessibility to education uh, then what happens the education will reach out to more people there will be equality in education that's one thing but the challenge you know what happens when you study in a classroom you build a network you interact with others that you miss in online education yes yes yeah let me add one point uh, so when you see if you look at uh, many people well, uh, why they study in harvard why why they uh, study in kellogg or why they study in wharton why because uh, uh, those institutions are very reputed one uh, they give quality of education that's the basic one second uh, advantage of studying in those institutions is that the brand and the people when you interact so what happens when these people leave the educational institutions they again connect so that help them to get some opportunities uh, either by way of employment or uh, uh, finance resources or whatever it is because they all belong to one family they all belong to uh, one nest so birds of the same feather flock together so what happens so these uh, net the net the network uh, it will be missing in the online education that's the minus point sure uh, and uh, uh, quality may am- hamper to some extent too but uh, education will become cheaper that's the plus point and education will reach out to many more people there will be more of equality in education so yeah. these are all the strengths and uh, weaknesses of online education and the future of education mm-hmm. whatever the way it is my conclusion is very clear uh, technology can never replace teachers 
Yes, that's 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 for sure. But uh, I suppose maybe a blended system where some online and some face to face. Yeah, but blended learning. We call it as blended learning. Excellent, excellent. Uh, but yeah. uh, you know, you and I now embrace technology, having grown up with face to face. But the younger children now, who find themselves about to start school and find themselves in this world with COVID and online, it doesn't work for them because we haven't laid down the foundations of communication and connect connection yet. So the blend will be necessary to serve that face-to-face -face embrace of communication along with the technology. Yeah? Yeah, agree, agree. So what do you see as man's key challenges in the future? Are we preparing our young well enough to meet these challenges and to be able to negotiate them? There are challenges and uh, there were challenges in the past. There are challenges now. There will be challenges in future. And we humans have evolved from stone age to spaces. We have survived and we have thrived. So what are the kind of challenges we encounter in the future? We'll be able to survive and try because we humans are best with resilient. We are very resilient mm -hmm. and we have the power of your imagination and creativity. Yes, so what are the challenges we, we get, uh, we'll be able to open up. For instance, COVID is uh, one of the challenges. Okay. Uh, uh, it has, we have overcome. And we'll have some more challenges like uh, COVID. Let, let us not assume that this is the end of the road. We'll have some other challenges. So challenges keep coming and we have to be prepared for those challenges. But at the same time, we have to learn from the previous challenges uh, by taking away how they work in the challenges. So that helps us uh, to prepare for the next challenges. That's how it is. For instance, Bill Gates uh, emphasizes uh, climate change. He talks about uh, this uh, pandemic uh, and he says, you know, we expect many more challenges in the future. So, but uh, the current uh, uh, takeaways from COVID-19 will help us prepare for the future pandemics and future challenges. Whatever uh, the challenges uh, that are likely to arise, uh, we'll be able to overcome. We have a saying in Ireland, in our Gaelic language, there, united we stand, divided we fall. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that maybe the antithesis of that is stay apart to keep safe. But I do believe the human standing together, united with each other and for each other, will overcome future challenges. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, if you can allow, I'll show you one more book on COVID-19. I have written a book on COVID-19. Sure. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, in that book, I talk about the same only. See, this COVID-19 is a boon in disguise. It has connected all human beings into one platform. And it, it attacked rich and poor alike. So it made humans uh, uh, very humble. It's like a coronavirus is like a tumble that made humans humble. Right? So the COVID-19 uh, emphasized uh, humanity, humility, and hope. Uh, this is the book on COVID-19 I have written. Wow. You, uh, have, you have been busy. Do you ever go to bed? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody asks. Okay, I'll, I'll respond to that. See, this is the book on COVID-19. Very good. Okay. Uh, this was published. Okay. Uh, ah, you wrote that this year? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it was published uh, some uh, uh, five, six months back. It was published. This book I have dedicated to uh, the uh, Indian Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. I admire him very much. Very good. In this book, I, uh, I, I wrote this book during the global lockdown. Uh, right. the global lockdown, everybody uh, was at home. Uh, you said uh, mental illness, depression, all those things. But I never have such kind of depression and mental illness because... I know how to make use of my time. Okay. Good. So I replaced that global lockdown 
and written uh, some uh, observations about uh, coronavirus and uh, i have published a research paper which was published by uk journal uh, in uh, emerald journals have published the uk journals have published okay. then i got some encouragement then i have uh, written a book and got it published very quickly this is the this is the book yes. on uh, covid 19 is the latest book on covid 19 so i have written uh, 50 books i told you know 50 books have been published Uh, you we uh, should be locked down for another year and you would have about five more books <laughs> so i i have some american friends uh, very top thinkers they always make a joke you are a voracious reader voracious uh, prolific writer you are a prolific author voracious reader uh, and during your lifetime i think you will write thousand books my <laughs> they just they just make a fun of me because they are my good friends uh, they are very Uh, top thinkers in the world they are very good friends very good. Uh, and for every book uh, some top uh, thinker will uh, write a foreword yes mm, so yes. this is the one and uh, now coming to the question you know uh, do you sleep or not see i, I, I every day night at uh, 10 o'clock uh, i go to bed morning 4 o'clock i wake up from my bed i served in the indian air force i got this discipline from uh, indian military okay and uh, my passion drives me to wake up at 4 o'clock and share my knowledge freely with the students this it's purely my passion towards students purely my passion towards education and learning that make me wake up 4 o'clock in the morning and sleep in the night 10 o'clock throughout the day i keep uh, writing reading and of course i go to gym also for workout 2 to 3 hours i do walk out in the gym also so i am that kind of guy yeah yeah well done well done but uh, you keep a healthy mind in a healthy body yeah yeah right 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 so cast your thoughts 30 years hence and tell me what you see for the world at large i am very much optimistic basically i am a very much optimistic so we will have a world uh, better than what it is now yeah and uh, people will have more luxuries more comforts but uh, uh, people will live for longer time because according to the research Uh, the longevity is increasing so people are living uh, for a longer uh, uh, life span is of the people is increasing globally so right. people will be live longer but they will have health complications mental illness depression uh, te- technology will bring more challenges and uh, so what i would feel is that uh, i would like to give a very wonderful message parents must uh, prepare their students Uh, parents must prepare their children to face challenges in the world and uh, they should not give any wealth to their children they should give good character to their children they should give good education to their children so parents must give two things to their children one is good character then good education third thing parents must teach their children how to face challenges and uh, they should not uh, give wealth wealth comes and goes but what are the education the children acquire will protect them during their uh, lifetime right. and uh, uh, by inspiring their children to be prepared for challenges so what happens they will grow by themselves and uh, children won't to depend on parents we have to make children to be independent that's what is required and the next generation of children will have challenges uh, much bigger challenges than us and there will be disruption there will be uncertainty there will be volatility there will be complexity likewise so we we are going to live in a world which is highly volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous so we have to be prepared for it mentally that's it yes that that vuca world they also yeah yeah oh bob bob he is my friend yeah he coined this uh, term vuca v u c a volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity is on my linkedin that the bob bob right. is the father of oka is on my linkedin many top thinkers are there on my linkedin you can search on linkedin so you can find out uh, the great people who are on my linkedin very good now final question all yeah. these questions i've asked you ah. <laughs> with, the, with the benefit of hindsight If you were to have met yourself now meet yourself as a 20 year old what advice would you give you Okay I have a couple of advices but I, I, I would uh, like to leave some of them First of all be ambitious 
don't be over ambitious that the first lesson i want to teach them having ambition is good but if you are over ambitious you will cut corners right so be ambitious don't be over ambitious first second thing is achieve success with integrity right two third advocate gender equality globally respect women we must respect women if 50% of the women also work hard along with men imagine what kind of world we will live we will be able to live in a world which is far better than what it is now that means we are not tapping the potential in women so we should advocate the gender equality we should emphasize women women empowerment uh, and uh, we should encourage women to be on par with men so that we will be able to build a better world remember a bird can not fly with one wing a bird needs two wings to fly similarly the society needs both women and men to work together collaborate together so that we can build a better world right so really i believe that women should not compete with men because there are vital differences and each bring their own strengths yeah. so instead they should synergize you know they yeah the yeah yeah they yeah yeah and work together as opposed yeah. to competing with each other what do you think collaboration you are telling synergy i say collaboration it means the same see uh, uh, see competition is good as long as it is healthy but i believe more in collaboration rather than competition so when you compete with someone it may lead to ill will envy jealousy and uh, bad mouthing so all those things so instead of competing with others let us collaborate you said synergy right one of the seven habits uh, said by stephen co stephen or co is synergy right yes, yes. you are very wise woman i i came to know from the interview that you are very wise woman with uh, with the huge knowledge on, uh, uh, in your mind so uh, this is synergy you, you are using the right words okay uh, i think you have a very strong education i think mm-hmm. you are using the right words like uh, technology technology is a tool you said over now you talk about synergy i say competition collaboration mm-hmm. so you you over simplified but you just put it in a nutshell right you are very precise that's why i, I often say that women are much smarter than men <laughs> <laughs> and men get angry with me men get angry with me what this professor ravi is telling why is supporting women it's not in that way where well, without women there is no man so yeah without yes. women there is no world yeah. forget about uh, uh, so, forget about uh, uh, man behind the success of every man there is a woman sure. always that's my quote and without women there is no world that's sure. it but uh, i suppose my background as a uh, 30 years as leader in education uh, in schools of different sizes and then as occupational psychologist and coach executive coach you you, you get a, a different overview of the human and also of the human in the workplace and what it is required for balance and for happiness ultimately yeah 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 so, Is there anything else you would like to add before we finish this conversation? And I hope I will have other conversations with you as you write and write and write and write more books, yeah? <laughs> It will be a true honor if you can invite me for further conversations. Uh, and I I think you you hit the bulls eye and uh, you have got the best from me to share with your listeners. Uh, the way you asked the questions, uh, you have asked uh, Uh, all uh, open ended questions so when you ask open ended questions uh, what happens the best within the in, uh, interview will come you have already taken the best from me for the benefit of your listeners so i i your listeners are very lucky uh, uh, lucky that they have a host like you and Thank your you. listeners are also lucky that i am a, they have a guest like me who can share my knowledge So, yes it's it has been lovely meeting you i mean if we didn't have zoom and we didn't have lockdown i would never have met you you know i have to had <laughs> to take a flight to delhi to <laughs> thank you thank you thank you yeah. we'll, so, we'll 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 cross our paths one day sure <laughs> sure if not in this life somewhere else no we'll, no no we'll, uh, we'll make it happen only in this life no second life in this <laughs> life we'll meet 
you, you you call me to ireland i will come i have many friends in ireland uh, yes. more than 100, 100 friends i have in ireland more really? than 100 friends all all good people from ireland good good you need to come to our green country sometime and see the beautiful green fields and the beautiful scenery and the yes. lovely people lovely inviting and, warm and, and the people with a great heart yes i, I can't name all 100 people uh, and some of the people they came from uh, uh, other countries and they are they are in ireland uh, right. when i ask them why you have come from italy to ireland france to uh, uh, ireland uh, this is a very beautiful place and the people are very warm receptive loving uh we don't feel that uh, we don't feel that we are from a different country we feel that we are part of ireland yeah, that yeah. is the greatness of ireland that's good that's good so for a small island country we have spread our wings to many corners of the earth yeah? yeah so thank you thank you for your time and i look forward to our next conversation thank yeah, you so you. much and, uh, i'm grateful to you for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, I, i also uh, uh thank uh, your listeners for their time uh, for uh, listening to this uh, uh, interview good. and i am grateful to you